my son wants to have sex. <laughs> he stands in the doorway to the kitchen pleading, but why, Mom? Why can't I have sex now? His shoulders slump over the hard plastic of his scoliosis brace. His forehead wrinkles and the corners of his mouth droop. You're 12, I say. That's way too young. And I think to myself, you're still tittering about that peck on her cheek on the hiking trip three months ago, the one you think I don't know about. You don't get it, he yells flopping to the floor in protest, the metal fasteners on his brace clanging on the hardwood floor. I've been wondering if this might happen. For weeks now, he and his girlfriend have been whispering their nightly phone calls, walking the line between flirting and inappropriate. At first, I stood in the hallway, ear pressed to the bedroom door, straining to hear, we need to get to the church early so we can give the rings to the ring barriers. That's fine, cute, really. We're going to have a kid of our own someday that we make together. Hmm, that one's borderline. <laughs> then things took an even racier turn, and I started listening on speakerphone so I could intervene more quickly. <laughs> also, so I could fold the laundry during the boring parts. <laughs> Your voice is so sexy. And we're going to need a condom. <laughs> Guys, I'd said, rushing into the bedroom where Oscar was lying on his bed, ear glued to the receiver. Come on, I pleaded. You're in sixth grade. Let's keep, in, let's keep it to hand-holding and hugs, or we're going to have to hang up. Caught. A long sigh. And then a resigned. OK, Mrs. Hill, piped through the phone speaker. Got it, Mom, Oscar said, his big brown eyes meeting mine. But I don't trust them. We've been doing this for weeks now, them whispering, speaking in code, me jumping in, redirecting, them trying again. A few months ago, Oscar started sixth grade at a school for kids with special needs. The head of school's wise words when we first toured the school spun in my head as I dropped him off that first morning. Look around while you are here, she had said to the group of us. Is this a place your child will have friends? Oscar had always had friends. Kids who created special roles for him in their fantasy-based playground games. Kids who didn't mind his perseveration about baseball. Kids who discreetly nudged him when it was his turn to speak in the school play. Kids who knew how to use just the right amount of humor to sidestep a meltdown. But these kids went off to their own middle schools, regular, big, bustling middle schools where Oscar couldn't manage. Too fast, too many people, too challenging. On that first day of sixth grade, as I gathered with the other parents in the window gymnasium for the welcome reception, I caught a glimpse of Oscar's teachers leading his class on a tour of the campus. I stood on tiptoe to peek above the crowd. Where was Oscar? Was he already left behind? Was even this small nurturing school too overwhelming? My mama angst flared. I thought back to the head of school's words about friendship. There's nothing I wanted more for Oscar. There was so much we were told to cross off the list when he was born, like living independently, driving a car, even college and holding a real job. So would he be able to bond with the other kids with special needs here? Could he have a friendship that wasn't reliant on the other child's patience and tolerance? but rooted instead in shared interests and a mutual desire to just hang out? What would it be like for him to have a true friend? Or, dare I think it, someday a girlfriend? But then I saw him. I almost didn't recognize him. Instead of inching along his low energy and flat affect signaling overload, he rounded the corner chatting and gesturing animatedly with an energetic curly-haired girl from his class, 
the one who had smiled so dazzlingly at him a few minutes earlier when I dropped him at the classroom door. I'd never seen him like this. So distracted by social endeavors, so engaged in a conversation with a peer. Of course, he should have been listening to his teacher, but I swelled with pride that he was not. <laughs> mom, mom, I have big news, he said as he got in the car after school that first day. His eyebrows danced and his lips were clamped shut, about to burst. I have a crush, he whispered, not wanting his eight-year-old sister to hear. I'll show you when we get home. She gave me notes. <laughs> sure enough, as soon as we got home, Oscar waved me into his bedroom and closed the door, peeking down the hallway first to make sure his sister wasn't around. He pulled three notes out of his backpack, notes covered with pictures of flowers and birds, and I heart you. And on the back of one, the sparkly smiled girl's phone number. Oscar beamed at me. He never had such attention, especially from a girl. And so it continues, me folding socks while I monitor their conversations, sometimes giggling to myself, sometimes needing to unmute my receiver when they start talking about tingly feelings and going to second base, <laughs> sometimes needing to remind him that he's far too young for sex. This mothering dance I never expected. This love I never dared dream. This wide-smiled, curly-haired girl, passionate about my floppy-limbed, stuttering preteen.